Hey everyone, I just recorded this video and it had no audio, so I'm doing it again. Welcome! <laughs> oh, I'm so frustrated. Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Lauren and today we are going to be talking about the runes. So here on my channel, I teach you all how to use your psychic abilities. Usually I focus on how to kind of do that up here, using your clairs and kind of just your natural gut instincts. However, there are some really cool tools out there that you can use to strengthen your psychic abilities and get information and guidance from your guides. And runes is one of those tools that you can use. So if you enjoy that kind of content, stick around, please subscribe. And we're gonna jump into it. We're gonna talk about the runes in general, what they are, where they came from. I'm also gonna teach you how to read with them. And then at the very end, I'm gonna go through each one individually so that if you're here to actually memorize, um, I can walk you through all of those. Now, the runes are basically based on a really old alphabet from like Northern, Central Europe, way, way back in the day. Um, this is not the full alphabet, but the alphabet was called the Elder Futhark. And this is like 24 of the symbols that are in it. And these symbols back then were kind of used more like ideograms, like think about when you're trying to like communicate something through a picture, like the men's restroom or the women's restroom or a stop sign. It's more of like a, a symbol, a drawing. Um, and so because of that, there's a lot of things on here that might not resonate with us a lot, you know, modern day. Like for example, there's a cattle um, rune in here, which a lot of people had cattle back then. So it kind of signifies like your property, but our property today is not cattle, not for most of us. So there is modern interpretations of these and we'll get into that with the actual meanings. There's so much cool history with this. When I learned this, there was like stories and um, like mythical, uh, what's the word, like uh, mythical stories around each and every single one of these runes. Way too much to go into for like this video, but you can definitely like do some searching, learn about it, and it might help you get even more meaning from each of these runes. Now, just like any divination tool, what you wanna do before you even do anything is make sure you're protected, make sure you're talking to somebody of your highest and best good, you guys know the protection steps. I have a whole separate video on it. I don't cover it in every video because it would just add so much time and it would get very repetitive. Um, but you guys know how to do that. Before we do anything, we want to protect ourselves. And then what you want to do is put all of your runes into like a bag, a bowl, something to hold them. This bag isn't my favorite because it's kind of small and I can't get my hand fully in there. My teacher had a really big bag that she could get like her whole hand in. I've also seen people like use um, cups and just like bowls in general, like wood bowls. Um, and basically all you do is you kind of ask a question similar to like tarot or oracle cards. Ask a question, dig in there and pull out as many or as little runes as you want. And then you throw them down. So then you're gonna have some runes in front of you. Some of them might be right side up, some of them might be upside down. We'll get to that and what it means here in a bit. But basically, based on the meanings that we're gonna talk about at the end of this video, you're gonna interpret what the answer to your question was. And so let me talk about the different ways, like the different amounts you can pull. So technically you could just pull one rune, you can pull one out, read that single one and have that be an answer to your question. I like to grab however many just feels right to me and I feel like a lot of people do that. Um, and then sometimes there's actual spreads that you can use, similar to tarot cards, where you know I'm gonna pull one for the past, one for the present, one for the future. And a lot of tarot spreads and oracle card spreads are honestly work very similar here. You can, you can ask the same questions and kind of use it like you would a spread. When I was learning this, my um, instructor was a shamanic practitioner. And so she liked to kind of draw an X on the mat in front of her, or just kind of like visually draw an X, like set a point um, on the ground and then she would throw it. And based on where these would land, so like if something would land in the north quadrant, something would land in the south or, or the east, it had different meanings. So like if you get gibo, which is gifts, in the south quadrant versus the north quadrant, it's gonna be two different things. So like gibo in the north quadrant, which is earth, um, you're, you're talking about gifts that are physical. They're like money maybe, even like, home stuff, very practical. Um, whereas if you get gifts in a different quadrant, it might mean something a little bit more like your emotions, which would be like the West or your intuition, um, or the East, which would kind of be more of like ideas, intellect, think air signs. 
So you could do the, the four quadrants. It adds a little bit of a layer of um, com complexity, but it might not be the best thing to start out with because trying to understand the runes and then the quadrants is a lot more complicated. But I think once you get there, it's great because then it adds an additional meaning to each of the runes. Now, when it comes to if you pull a rune and it comes out upside down, you can decide whether or not you want to read it upside down or reversals is what we call them. So set the intention ahead of time, like uh, I'm not going to bother with reversals or yeah, I will read them. And if you do decide to read the reversals, basically what it could mean is that that's being hidden from you right now. So if you have, I, I'm just going to use Gibo, the gifts one as a, the example. If you have um, Gibo upside down, maybe it's that there's gifts coming in that you're just not seeing right now. You're ignoring those gifts. It could also mean that something is blocking that from coming in and, you know, based on what you pull around it, it might give you some more information. So like maybe something else is blocking gifts from coming in. Um, so you can just read it as something that's needed, something that's being ignored or something that's being blocked. And one of the cool things about runes is that a lot of people use bind runes or like sigils, you know, there, there's a lot of crossover there, but um, a lot of people will combine sigils or, or runes to um, make new rune symbols. Um, so if you really want gifts mixed with the energy of like something coming to you quickly, you could combine those runes. You could, you could, you know, put it on your arm. You could have a tattoo. You could um, like put it on a candle when you're trying to manifest something. Um, so runes are often actually used as well to kind of like symbolize an idea of something that you want to invite in. So that's really it, you guys. That's all there is to the runes. Now it's just more about memorizing them and getting a familiarity with which one means what. Now this has taken me a little bit longer to memorize and I think it's just because they're very simple lines basically. Now I'm using Rune Reader by Rena Shesso and like I took her class and I tried to see if you guys would be able to get this online and you just can't unless you're in the Colorado area and you go to a local metaphysical store. I don't think she sells them online. However, you can take notes from this video or you can go pick up another rune book. Just, you know, choose one thing and decide and maybe write down what you want those runes to mean for you and then use that consistently. Because if you're constantly looking up different people's interpretations, it's going to be a lot harder for it to stick in your mind. Fehu stands for cattle. Fehu is about skills, money, personal property, our wealth, our possessions, and our ability for acquiring and managing these things. Uru stands for buffalo. Buffaloes are wild. They have raw, transformative energy, physical drive, and it can also be about like a group or a collective. Thurisaz is the thorn, also giant. This can be about boundary issues, edges, clarifying those boundaries, how we define ourselves and our personal space. Think of thorns on a bushes and how it protects and wards off people. Ansu's stands for mouth. It can be about speech and spirit. This is about breath, language, inspiration, communication. This is how we define and express ourselves. Rado is radius or wheel, and this signifies motion, the cyclical pattern of life, circles, forward motion, and your own role within it. Kanaz or torch is kind of like a torch being lit with fire. This signifies fire, a light bulb going off over your head or new fire or something that is going to be rekindled within your spirit. This can be the brightness or the darkness in your life. Gibo is about gifts, equal arms, balance, an exchange of energies or a reciprocal connection. This can also be about promises and reciprocity. Wunjo stands for joy. It also signifies a weather vane. This is how we respond to the wind, to the things in our life. It's about being fluid and adaptable. Also asking what brings you joy and happiness. Hagalaz stands for hail. Ice can signify a storm or a freezing over. It's a force of nature we can't control. It can be destructive, but it can also make way for new growth. 
So this rune can be about upheaval and sudden changes. Naduiz is need fire. So it looks like kindling a stick. You need fire. This is about being kindled anew. This is about determination, action. It's about what lights a fire under you. This is about regenerative change, friction, a willingness to move forward. And where you have friction, you have spark, that spark of fire representing passion. Isa is like an icicle or ice. It's motion stopped, not going anywhere for a while, which isn't a bad thing. It's about hanging out. It's about putting things on pause and resting. Jera means harvest. This can reflect a year or a season. It talks about the concept of timing and being in the right time for something. Are you in harmony with the cycles that are happening? This is understanding the cycle of planting, growth, harvest, feast, and storage. Yuaz is you. It has a hook in each world, both the upper and lower. This is about the messages that we carry through these yew trees up into the upper world and down into the lower world. This can be about trance, dreaming, ancestors, intuitive information flowing from one side to another. Perthro is womb or also a dice cup. If you look from the side, it looks like a dice cup that you would shake and let dice fall out. Similar to a womb, a womb holds something. It's a vessel. This is probably my favorite room because it talks about you know something is growing, but you don't quite know what's inside. You don't know the outcome until the dice is rolled. So this rune can talk about random odds, creation, hidden potential, luck, and surprises. Elhaz means elk antler. It's similar to like a stop sign, halt, protect yourself. It can also represent a tool, a tool to protect yourself. What tools serve you? Well, the elk antler was one of the earliest tools that humans use. So it's asking, what are you holding on to? What are you grasping? What are you releasing? So willow is sun. This is about lightning, things getting brighter, a light that shines for all. It can also be about hope, shedding a light on something, shadows or darkness vanishing, something being healed. Tiwaz is arrow or spindle. It can be a spear that points to the North Star, it's your focus. Similar to archery, it requires practice, patience, intention, skill. This asks, what are you aiming at? Where is your path? Are you on target? Where are your intentions focused? Burkano is birch tree. This is also similar to the goddess Frigga, which is signaling the start of spring planting. It's about nurturing yourself, nurturing your relationships, I like to read it as B, as in bosom. This is about a sense of renewal, pregnancy, abundance, and nourishment. Mother Earth. Yuaz, horses. It almost looks like two horses kissing. This is about movement, but movement in association to others. It can be about a horse and its rider, a horse race, competitions, duets, duality. It's about how you're linked with others. Are you in tandem or are you in a tug of war? Manus stands for human being and this is supposed to be a visual representation of holding hands. It's about the human body. It translates as those born of woman. This is that primal visceral body that we live in. It's getting out of your head and into your body. It's humanness. When this comes up, this can be about examining your body, mind, and spirit. Lagoose is moving water or water falling. This looks like a waterfall. This can be about situations, emotions, understanding that they're fluid and in motion, that you can't quite control things. This asks if you're gasping for something slippery, are you going with the flow or are you going against the flow? Ingwas actually stands for two home deities, Ing and Nerthus. Um, this is about like sex, hugging, cuddling. This can also be about like your heart of your house, household protection, being sexually contented. It's about passion, your home, your hearth, communication, nurturing your own flame. Degas means day. 
and it looks like a door which can also be about like daylight breaking opening the door letting the daylight in this is about the ending of one cycle and the beginning of the next think the world card in tarot this is about time passing new opportunities exiting as well as entering othala is a state this is that ancestral land that you know we might not always have but you can think about things that you would pass down to generations knowledge passions core truths your place in the world this is about our ancestry and traditions family family land deeply held beliefs and your inner roots the last rune is blank and this is the empty one and this is actually in case you lose a rune you can replace it um, but a lot of people read it and this one is called um, the empty one um, or blank it, it doesn't have a name when you draw this one you're literally drawing a blank this could mean like stop come back to it later it could mean that you're missing something or you overlooked something or something's just not ready yet all right, everybody, I hope that helped. Feel free to come back anytime to reference this video. And I also wanted to mention that we have a Patreon. So at that Patreon, you can get early access to these videos. We also have like coaching Q and A. So people send me their questions about, you know, psychic development and I answer them. We also have additional readings. Um, we have psychic live game nights. We have additional like live nights where we do readings. So. Feel free to join us over there. I think it's a good um, bang for your buck. And I thank all of you that are supporting me on Patreon because if it weren't for you guys, I wouldn't be able to do as much as I could here on my channel because I do make all these videos for free. So it really helps me out. So if you enjoyed this video, thank you so much. Please give it a big thumbs up. Leave a comment down below to help engage and tell YouTube that you like this video. It helps me a ton. Alrighty, guys. Thank you so much. I will see you next time. Bye.